You may remember a well, a couple of weeks ago, we asked that sort of simple question. Who would be worse, Johnson or Truss? <laughs> and I think now, I think now, as, as I put forward then, both Truss and Johnson were going to be worse in two very, very different ways, as we have very clearly seen. But the trust, the end of trust, and even more so than the end of Johnson, I think will certainly have a lot more longer-term consequences on not only just the Conservative Party, but even, indeed, the direction that we go from Brexit. Because you may remember, all those ultra-hard Brexiteers backed Boris, put Boris in, but they were starting to say towards the end of, of course, Boris Johnson's reign, Johnson's not Brexiting enough, or he's not doing it right, or he's not conservative enough. Because, as we always said, they had been captured by this right-wing, libertarian, free market fundamentalist faction in the party that had essentially taken control under trust. They were in charge. They were the ones who were responsible, who even Lord Frost, very much backing Truss prior to this, saying that Truss's ideas and policies would be great. They'd be wonderful. With even many right-wing commentators saying, as you may remember from the Daily Mail, that this was the first true conservative budget ever in years. What now? They were very quickly the next day saying that she, even she had to go. So what exactly full damage has this done and how deep this damage goes? Um, time will tell, but it could result in some very, very interesting actions. But before we do get into that, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and one updation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel that way. So, as always, thank you very much uh, to that, and on we go. So, we're not going to go through all this piece. We're just going to go through a couple of this piece, because Martin Kettle did a piece about how... Um, in the Guardian about how the trauma of the trust era will affect British politics for years to come. And I think he's right. And in it, he did a piece about what might happen to the Conservative Party and especially around Brexit. And I think the, he's spot on with what could happen here with the Conservative Party. So this is his piece that he wrote. So although Jeremy Hunt still invokes the compassionate One Nation Conservatism, that the traditionalists are now fatally weakened. The Tory party has moved decisively to the right, channeling much of the worldview of UKIP. What have we been saying for years? The UKIP infiltration happened and no one cared about was this having any, you know, consequences to the party. They didn't care. It was just winning them more votes. And they have moved even more decisively to the right. And this has upset a lot of all these other, again, those compassionate one nation conservatives. So anyway, he continues, in despite of Truss's fall, the progressive uh, individualism deriving from the Thatcher era remains the default ideology of much of the party. The big financial interventions over COVID and energy prices and the market attack on the mini budget and tax cuts have done little to actually change this. The Tories who argue that taxes should rise, such as journalist Daniel Fil uh, Finkelstein this week, I think that's how you say it, are vanishingly rare. Those who hope the party of Michael Heseltine will somehow re-emerge from the ashes of the trust debacle will be very disappointed. If Johnson recaptures the party next week, the prospect of the Tories splitting as the Liberals did in 1918 and Labour in 1981 will increase with lasting consequences. And I think they are right. I, I think he's right. If somehow Johnson does manage to recapture the party later on today, we'll find out if he's in the running. But if he manages to go forward and win, the party will split. The party will split, and it will have massive damaging consequences to the Conservative Party going forward. It happened to the Liberals. It happened to Labour. It will now 
happen to the Conservatives because we've always said they've had those big ideological differences that they have not been able to, to solve or even resolve or keep those people with those ideologies sort of you know quietly at the back out of the way they haven't been able to resolve those issues but it's not just of course the future problem it will create for the tories with them potentially splitting into sort of a, a new party could it could a new party be split off from the conservative party and what faction will it be will it be the moderate compassionate one nation conservatives split from the party and create something new will it be those right-wing free market libertarians who decide to split and make their own party even if even if let's say sunak wins and johnson doesn't could that happen still i think a split is very very likely on the cards because there are far far too big ideological differences in the party to be solved just that simply but also talks about brexit so this is what he had to say about brexit so you might think that the mini budget trauma would now allow a more pragmatic approach to brexit to emerge we would hope <laughs> as mark carney pointed out a few days ago in 2016 the british economy was 90 percent the size of germany's but is now less than 70 percent now the tax cuts and the doubling down on the inequality have boomed as a solution. There is a fresh logic in the for in forging a better post-Brexit economic links with the EU. That at least is in the view of the historian uh, and uh, historian uh, Anthony uh, Sheldon, who said this week that the mini budget is the humiliation, is the end of the Brexiteer view that everything can be blamed on what Lord Frost called the hectoring classes and the blob of the stupid people who cannot see the truth. Intellectually, Sheldon may be spot on, but don't hold your breath for a more pragmatic approach to Brexit. And I think he is still right. So long as those forces are still in control, especially those right-wing libertarians are still in control of the party, they are not going to want to forge a closer economic links with Europe. Because doing that, the closer you go and you forge those economic links, well, then it, then it, then the question becomes, well, why aren't we in the single market customs union? And then once you start asking that question, what happens? The UK ends up in the single market customs union. Once we're in the single market customs union, why aren't we fully in the EU? And then we end up fully in the EU. And as we said, all this time, years and years ago, our path back to the EU is, is already laid out. It was just a matter of time because he, he, Brexit was just illogical from start to finish. And now these Brexit ultras who for years have said, you're not Brexiting right, or you're not doing Brexit properly, or you're not taking advantage of those big Brexit wins, these Brexit opportunities. Well, that was Truss's government. The mini budget was exactly what they wanted to do, what they wanted to put forward to the Conservative Party and essentially do to Britain to turn it into the Singapore on Thames dream idea that they have had for years. And of course, it failed. And it was all on them. There was no one else to blame. There was none of this blob to stop them, all these people who just couldn't see the truth. Well, the market spoke, and <laughs> the markets that they worship so much came down and punished them for trying to do what they thought the markets would reward them for. Apparently not this time. And where does Brexit go from here? Well, you would hope for, again, a more pragmatic view to, towards Europe. Um and I think this is very much going to fall to the Labour Party to have to do. I think they really have to start having a proper conversation about Europe. And I think that really starts probably at the next general election, maybe once they take power. But even they will have to admit, yeah, we have to start forging closer economic ties with Europe. And then as soon as that happens, the question gets asked, well, why aren't we part of the single market? Then once that happens, when we're in the single market, why aren't we part of the EU? And of course, as we said, boom, 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 back we go. So, as always, 
Thank you very much, uh, of course, for watching. And of course, please remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.